What is something that sounds extremely wrong but is actually correct? Story 1. In the Netherlands, Santa Claus is accompanied not by elves but by somewhere between six and eight black men. Ha 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 ha, I know, I'm Dutch and they're called Svorte Python. It is true that they used to be slaves, but now they're just good friends? Plot twist, it's actually an inner city basketball team that Santa hired to dunk presents down the chimney. Story 2. You are statistically more likely to be killed by a vending machine than from a shark. Fun fact, if people regularly interacted with sharks and occasionally shook them vigorously, this statistic would be different. But if sharks dispensed snacks, every school would have one. Story 3. In Catalonia, the nativity scene, Birth of Jesus, features a man taking a crap as well as the other regular characters. Yeah, it's called the Cagatillo. Also, the Cagatillo is a replacement for Santa Claus in certain Latin American countries. They decorate a log with a face and legs, and the week before Christmas, the kids leave food out every day to feed it. On Christmas, they sing a song while beating the log with a stick, and it supposedly craps out presents. The more you feed it, the more presents it craps, or at least that's the theory. Edit. Maybe this is also in Catalonia? Learned about it three years ago from a Spanish teacher who had traveled to so many countries that I can't remember which, but he learned about it via personal experience with a host family. Edit part two. Yep, I effed up. Not Latin America, definitely Catalonia, and also some places in the province of Aragon, i.e. Barcelona. Edit part three. Jesus Christ, I need to look at a map. Barcelona is in Catalonia. Look, getting the geography and culture right is certainly important, but I feel like we're spending a little too much time on it when we could be talking about a man pooping in the nativity scene. I need the story behind that. How did that come to be? Comments, help. Story four. Generally, it's more likely and consistent for things to go according to plan than horribly wrong. Kind of deflated my pessimism a little bit. On a related note, the news report on how the world doesn't work. For example, man bites dog. Things that go to plan or are common slash normal aren't news. For example, man bites dog. This means that arguably watching the news regularly can make you less informed about how the world works than someone who never watches the news. Something to remember when browsing and taking it too seriously. Story 5. If there are 23 people in a room, there is a more than 50% chance that at least two of them have the same birthday. Edit. And with just 70 people, the probability is higher than 99.99%. I've explained the birthday paradox, I think that's what it's called, so many times. Seen it reenacted in classes, I still can't figure it out. Well, it seems unlikely because you imagine the situation of being in a room with 23 people, like at school, and rarely has anyone else had your own birthday. But the statement says there's a 50% chance that any two people could share the same birthday, not one particular person and someone else. The big confusion is that it's not anyone sharing your birthday, it's anyone sharing anyone's birthday. Each person in the room has 22 chances for a shared birthday. Most people think it would just be one chance. Story 6. We are closer to 2040 than we are to 1995. La 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 la, I can't hear your lies. People born in January 2000 are legally adults. That is what I meant to say, but I effed up in the phrasing. Crap, that just made me realize on December 31st, 2017, every person over 18 in the world would have been born in the second millennium whereas every person under 18 would have been born in the third millennium. Stuff like this was actually the cause of a bit of an existential crisis for me. World War II ended in 1945. I was born in 1983. More time has passed between the day I was born and now than had passed between the end of World War II and the day I was born. World War II! A thing that for me, when I was a little kid, felt like ancient history. I've now lived longer than what once felt like ancient history to me as a kid, and I hate it. Story 7. My favorite answer to this is, the last execution by guillotine in France occurred the same year Star Wars was released. 1977 was a lovely year. Not for that one guy, though. Wait, did he get to see it first? Story 8. In English, set has more meanings than any other word, over 400 uses. Yeah, there's actually a whole branch of linguistics dedicated to studying that. We call it set theory. 
That's for the tag-along thread, what sounds extremely correct but is actually wrong. Wowie. Dictionary.com slash browse slash set. Story 9. Unvaccinated children are statistically less likely to develop autism. You have to be alive to develop autism. Edit. For the sake of clarity, unvaccinated children are not guaranteed to die of a preventable disease. I am arguing they are more likely to die than a vaccinated child. I am also not arguing it isn't present from birth, but instead it would not have a chance to develop if they are dead. I was almost marginally triggered. Well done. Clever, but since autism is something you are generally born with, it still is factually inaccurate. Story 10. A ton of people is approximately 12 people, or one OP's mom. That was a nasty crack. Speaking of nasty cracks, how's your mom? Or eight, if you're American. Story 11. The 10th president, John Tyler, president from 1841 until 1845, still has living grandchildren. Don't go making me do the math, OP. I'm not gonna do it. I refuse. Story 12. Strawberries and raspberries aren't really berries, but bananas are. Along the same lines, peanuts aren't a nut. Also, sperm, but people make that mistake all the time. On the contrary, snozberries really do taste like snozberries. Story 13. Smokers have an average longer lifespan than non-smokers. Because most smokers are 18 and over, and most children that die are non-smokers, lowering the average lifespan. Gotta get more sick kids smoking. This one pretty sick kid should also drive a lifted truck and drink Monster Energy. Is that sick enough? You either die a non-smoker or live long enough to be given an option to become a smoker. This is the reason why average lifespan statistics can be so misleading. The average lifespan in medieval times might be like 40 or whatever. But it isn't because people didn't live into their 60s and 70s. It's because, sadly, children dying during childbirth and whatnot was a lot more common, dragging down the average. This is why context and stuff is extremely important when it comes to statistics. Story 14. Having six fingers is a dominant trait in a Punnett square model. I just learned that in class the other day. Being a mindset is also dominant. So is the reason we're not all six-fingered little people because of S selection? Two copies of the achondroplasia dwarfism gene are lethal. That's why that is unlikely to become a common trait. Story 15. A polar bear has black skin and its fur is clear. If you look closely at polar bear fur, you also drastically reduce your lifespan. You can also pet them, but only once. Polar bears and brown bears are often considered different species, but polar bears are actually a relatively new subspecies of brown bears. And the two can interbreed and produce fertile offspring. Also, mules can very rarely produce foals. Story 16. The other day I heard someone say botan as a past tense variable of to buy. I nearly flipped my crap thinking there was no way. Apparently, way. Edit. There's been some discussion whether it is a verb or rather an adjective. From what I found from Googling, it functions as both. Formed from the past tense of by, the word botan takes bot and adds n, just as hidden comes from hid, the past tense of hide. And like hidden, botan has two functions, adjective and verb form. In the Little House on the Prairie books, the word botan is used a few times, as in botan broom. For the longest time, I thought botan was some kind of material the stuff was made out of. Edit. This is now my highest rated comment. Thanks. I hate it. Also, for context, I got most of the books when I was very young, between about four and seven, and this was back in the 80s, before Google existed. English is freaking weird. English is three languages stacked on top of one another in a trench coat trying to function as a real adult. Story 17. The Japanese word for lemon is remen. Before you call me racist, ask Google. There's a long list of Japanese words that were adopted from English that just sound like someone doing a racist Japanese impersonation. Colorado, Kororado. Okay, but let's be clear. This is because Japanese doesn't natively have an L sound. However, the R sound people use isn't pronounced the same as an English speaker would say an R sound either. The Japanese wouldn't say remen, but it's more of a sound between a hard R and L sound. Remen. I don't really speak Japanese, but to be fair, it's more complicated than they're presenting here. 
Story 18. Nintendo started up in 1889. Kind of makes sense why people would think it sounds wrong, though. They're pretty much only known nowadays for their games slash consoles. Nokia was founded even earlier, 1865, and was involved in paper, wood, and rubber industries, among others. The Ottoman Empire still existed back then, too. Imagine a whole empire based on putting your feet up. Story 19. Maine is the closest U.S. state to Africa. I bless the Mains down in Africa. I recently found out that Toto is not the name of a single black man, but the name for the band of a group of white dudes. There was some place I can't remember where, but some city in Africa that for much of the year is colder than New York. I think the reason was elevation. Story 20. Do you have two hands? Congrats, you're above average. Don't forget about your legs. I don't have hands on my legs. Story 21. The color orange was named after the fruit. Yo, what should we call these round, sweet things? Uh, I don't know, oranges? Cool. Now, what do we call this new color that's made by mixing red and yellow? Hey, that's the same color as oranges. Orange it is. Wow, inventing English is fun. Before that, oranges were referred to as red, probably in much the same way as a lot of people would call things like burgundy red or aqua blue. I'm imagining that's why people with orange hair are known as redheads. It was also called yellow red or red yellow in a lot of languages, and fire red in Swedish, using the word for fire that specifically refers to a larger fire in a building, forest, etc. Story 22. Lighters were invented before matches. I don't know why this makes me mad, but it does. What? Okay, that makes me mad too for some reason. That, what? No. Story 23. Alaska is the most northern, western, and eastern state in the U.S. because one of its islands stretches across the line into the eastern hemisphere. Greenland is both north, south, east, and west of Iceland. Story 24. The unicorn is actually the national animal of Scotland. Did you know that William Wallace drank from the breast of a unicorn? Unicorn milk! Those were William Wallace's last words. But the movie producers thought that viewers would be confused by that, so they changed it to freedom. It was either that or adding a unicorn breast feeding scene at the beginning of the movie. Unicorns have breasts? What is this anime? I can never tell when this site is lying or not, so I tried looking this up. It doesn't appear to be true, but there are more results about William Wallace and unicorns than I would have thought. Story 25. Female ferrets can actually die from not having enough intercourse. Today I learned I'm a female ferret. It's not from not having enough intercourse. It's if a female goes into heat and doesn't mate, it will kill her. Bleeds to death. It's bizarre. ETA. I was wrong. They get estrogen poisoning and develop aplastic anemia. So it is blood-based, but not bleeding. Story 26. Reddit is more popular than Instagram. Also Twitter. Also Yahoo is more popular than Amazon. I'm curious, based on what metric user count? because I would guess conservatively that like 80% of total accounts are alts or throwaways or bots. Story 27. There is a species of shark, the Greenland shark, that has a lifespan of approximately 500 years. 392 plus or minus 120 years to be exact. That really is far from exact. Edit. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Precision doesn't equal accuracy. I'd really like to sell you guys a beer and give you exact change, plus or minus $120. Well, they have an exact mean and an exact margin of error. That seems twice as exact than just an exact average. Exactly! Story 28. Earth is the center of the observable universe. Take that, Copernicus! Even better, you are. Technically, you are at the center of the observable universe. I don't care how true that might be based on semantics and whatnot. This is not something we need to be telling people on the internet. Besides, some of us are disembodied voices trapped in an endless existence observing the endless expanse of the internet that is also smaller than the exact point of a pin. Story 29. There are more exceptions to the rule I before E except after C in the English language than there are instances where it is true. There are also more trees on Earth than stars in the galaxy. I before E except after C and when sounding like a neighbor and way and on weekends and holidays and all through May and you'll always be wrong no matter what you say. I before E except after C except when your feisty foreign neighbor Keith leisurely receives eight counterfeit beige sleighs from caffeinated atheist weightlifters. Weird. Story 30. 
Inflammable and flammable mean the same thing. Story 31. France has more time zones than Russia. Because of the islands, right? I seem to recall from geography class an eternity ago that France is also ranked quite high in sea territory ownership despite being a fairly small country. That's the same reason that France has the longest domestic flight. I think it's between Paris and St. Martin in the Pacific. E. It's probably wrong. Apparently, St. Martin is in the Atlantic. Story 32. Anne Frank and Martin Luther King Jr. were born in the same year, and they're both dead. Story 33. If you put your finger in your ear and scratch, it sounds just like Pac-Man. Be honest now, how many of you tried it after reading this? Guilty as charged. It worked, too. Ha! I already knew this, so I didn't bother trying. I'm already quite familiar. Thank you very much. Mwah, 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 mwah. Story 34. The battery light on your dashboard is a better indicator of your alternator failing than your battery. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 35. The Pater in Helicopter is the same as the Pater in Pterodactyl. One would think that the word is helicopter, but it's actually helicopter from ancient Greek helix, spiral, plus pteron, wing. Story 36. The original name of Pepsi was Brad's Drink. Story 37. Nuclear power is safer and cleaner than any other source of energy generation mankind has ever made by a wide margin. Even more so than solar or wind? I know that most energy sources are polluting, but I've always seen solar and wind as the perfect utopian compatible energy source. Correct. Solar produces roughly 40 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour of energy because it is more material intensive than nuclear for a given amount of power generation. You need roughly 20 square kilometers, that's 20 million square meters, of solar panels to generate the same energy as a 2 gigawatt electric plant. Wind does better with a median of 11 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour versus nuclear's 12 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour median. However, nuclear's minimum CO2 footprint is only 3.7 grams CO2 per kilowatt hour against wind's approximately 7 grams per kilowatt hour. Nuclear's median value is due to us running mostly 40-year-old reactors with 50 to 60-year-old designs in inefficient configurations. Compared against present-day tech for wind power, were we to start building new nuclear plants in mass, the CO2 footprint would be closer to the present-day minimum than the present-day median. Hydropower has the lowest CO2 footprint of them all, median of 24 grams per kilowatt hour, but minimum of 1 gram per kilowatt hour. Hydropower is really quite good. We should use it wherever we can. It's just not scalable because it's geographically limited and we've already dammed up most of the places it makes sense to. Plus, there are non-CO2 regulated ecological impacts. Of course, solar and wind can't fail as catastrophically as some other power sources, so people don't notice. Hydropower also does worse than nuclear power. Actually, it's very similar to nuclear power. Powerful, clean, reliable energy with rare but catastrophic failure modes. The worst dam burst occurred in China and killed over 22,000 people. And dam breaks are actually not nearly as uncommon as nuclear accidents. Nuclear power has had three major accidents. Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, and Fukushima. The first had zero deaths. The second had 4,000 deaths. The third had essentially no deaths, although you could argue a number of up to perhaps 50 people amid a tsunami disaster that killed 15,000. It's interesting that you say Fukushima Daiichi to be a nuclear accident. I have always regarded it to be more of a natural disaster. What caused the reactors to shut down was the earthquake and the following tsunami, and even then it went through the shutdown in case of disaster process as it should have. I think it's formidable that the damage in Daiichi was still so limited from how bad it could have been. I don't know enough about Three Mile Island, that's from before my time and the other part of the world. Chernobyl is something that should never have happened. It was a combination of idiot management and lack of naysaying by the workers involved. They were going to test something purposefully, having shut down the majority of the safety mechanisms a nuclear power plant has. I still find it rather fascinating how now, more than 30 years later, Mother Nature has reclaimed the ground there. It's a cruel yet beautiful reminder that if you mess with safety, it can and will go horribly wrong. At the same time, Chernobyl caused a significant tightening on the security rules regarding power plants. Sometimes accidents are needed for improvement.
That was a lot of information and a lot of comments, and I'm not nearly educated on this stuff enough to weigh in. Like, I could ask about other forms of pollution being considered, like nuclear waste and solar panels and all this, but I don't know. Seems like a complicated issue. Story 38. Beeves is a plural of beef. No! 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 Story 39. All the planets fit between the Earth and the Moon. This isn't totally false, but it also isn't completely true. Most calculations to support this fact fail to take into account the radii of the Earth and Moon, since celestial distances are measured from the centers of the bodies. When taking them into account, it turns out this is only true when the Moon is close to its apogee, greatest distance from Earth. The sum of the diameters of the planets and radii of the Earth and Moon is larger than the average distance between them, but less than the maximum. Story 40. Owning a slave wasn't criminal in England until 2010. The trade of slaves was outlawed in the 19th century. Story 41. If you give birth underwater, the baby can live its whole life without needing to breathe air. I mean, anyone can go the rest of their life without breathing, though. I'm going to take umbrage with the use of the word needing in that first sentence because I'm going to go ahead and say there is a biological need that is not being met. This is one of those things that sounds clever until one of your brain cells lights up for more than a few seconds. Story 42. An average of 100 people choke to death on ballpoint pens every year. Story 43. Charles Darwin and Abraham Lincoln were born on the same exact day. Story 44. The fax machine was invented during the same time period people were traveling the Oregon Trail. Not the video game, the actual Oregon Trail. 1843. Story 45. Dinosaurs walked the Earth many months ago. Story 46. Factoid doesn't mean a small fact or trivia. It means a piece of information that people think is true because it's accepted as true, though isn't. So, factoid is truly a factoid. You might want to change that doesn't mean to didn't originally mean because I have a little factoid for you. Language changes and evolves, and accepted meanings of words that differ from the original meanings overwrite those original meanings all the time. That actually is a factoid in the modern sense of the word. Story 47. Traffic signal lights were in use before automobiles. Story 48. The zipper method on roads. I know it pees people off when cars are in the merge lane and try to cut in, but it's actually more efficient. That lane is there for a reason. It works just like a pants zipper. Absolutely fine until a D gets in the way. Story 49. The old-time record high temperature in Alaska, 100 degrees Fahrenheit in 1950, is higher than that of Hawaii, 98 degrees Fahrenheit, 1957. Uh, a quick internet search seems to indicate that Hawaii also had a 100 degree Fahrenheit day in the 1930s. I hate when I have to pull some mainly fact checks, but that was just too easy to disprove. Story 50. 50% 50 of Canada's population lives south of Seattle. Story 51. While the letter E is the most common letter in the English alphabet, it's actually the least common first letter for major cities all over the world. Story 52. If you go south from Detroit, you end up in Canada. Story 53. Donald Trump is president. Not my president. Edit. I'm not American. I feel like there's a possibility that this thread is a few years old. And if it isn't, then there's the possibility someone is delusional. Story 54. The state vegetable of Oklahoma is the watermelon. Story 55. Greenland is icy and Iceland is green. Story 56. The first Native American that the Plymouth Colony met just walked up to them and asked for a beer in English. Story 57. Toronto is south of Minneapolis. Minnesota is further north of the lower 48 states. Maine is closer to Africa than Florida. Greenland and Alaska are a lot bigger than they appear on maps. The way maps are drawn can really skew our perception of size and orientation. Well, well, Toronto, it seems I have yet another thing to hold above you. My latitude. Minnesota forever! Story 58. Men don't get paid more for the same job. Correct. This issue is that women are underrepresented in a lot of higher-paying careers, so the average woman makes less than the average man. Still a problem, but not the same problem that most think it is. Story 59. There are three doors, and two of them contain a goat while one is a car. You want the car. 
You select a door but don't open it. The game show host opens one of the remaining two doors to reveal a goat. Should you stick with your original door or switch to the remaining one? You should switch. It's not a 50-50 chance now, as many think. It's the Monty Hall problem. Story 60. Oxford University predates the Aztec civilization. Story 61. If you put black pepper on the freshly sliced side of a strawberry, apparently it makes the strawberry taste sweeter and the taste of the pepper is non-existent. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.